Hey everybody, it's Jeff here from TheRevitKid.com. I'm here in my office working on BIM After Dark Volume 1, The Redux. Uh, if I turn around here, you should be able to see. There we go. We're working pretty hard here. So BIM After Dark Volume 1 is a complete redo of all the brand new presentation techniques that I've been working on. Um, this video that you're about to see is directly from the series, so if you're interested in it, make sure you check out the link below or head on over to BenAfterDark.com for more information. See you guys later. In this chapter, we're going to talk about how you can quickly add depth to your elevations using a couple different techniques, including the depth queuing tool. Now the depth queuing tool was introduced in 2017 and it's going to allow you to quickly go from this type of elevation to this type of elevation. Notice how much more depth this elevation has and how much more it pops. So before we actually go into that exact example, I'm going to show you exactly what the depth queuing tool is. To do so, I have a project here that helps explain what the depth queuing tool is. So for those of you who don't know where it is, in Revit 2017, 18 or 19, simply go over in an elevation view. So if I go to my east elevation, I'm going to go down to graphic display options. I'm going to pull down where it says depth queuing and I'm going to turn on show depth. So here it is here, show depth. Now the one thing with the depth queuing tool that I want you to understand is that they don't do a great job uh, explaining exactly how these numbers affect your elevation. So a lot of people use it and they just kind of guess until something looks good. Now down here, they talk about a fade limit being a percentage, which is great. What I want you to do is think about these numbers, the near and the far setting, also as percentages. So I'm going to open up a set of images. And these images are going to sort of help explain how this works. So the first thing that I do when I'm using the depth queuing tool is I set my far clip offset of my elevation to the furthest element of the project. Now the reason I do that is I've gone through a million different tests and I can't find any consistency with not having far clip on and what the results are. And what that means is uh, it really becomes a crapshoot. So if you really want to just go out there and guess and make sliders every single time you're doing an elevation, then you can do that. But in order to really understand what's happening and set up a sort of set of standards and maybe some consistency, what I like to do is go into my elevations, set the far clip offset of each elevation to be the distance of the furthest element. Or if you want to go a little beyond or before, depending on the style that you've got. But it's a nice, easy way to understand it. So we've got the far clip offset in this image at 90 foot 4 inches. Now I'm changing my near depth clipping and my far, far depth clipping to 20 and 80. Now you notice I'm putting percentages there. And that's because the most consistent thing I can find out by using math, and if I jump back into my floor plan here, uh, you can see I've got some parameters set up. If I select here, what these parameters are doing are actually create a percentage based on the far clip offset. So you can see this is 50% and 90%. So if we jump back in those images, what you'll notice is that from 0 to 18 feet, we've got solid black. So basically, you're going to get exactly what you'd normally get with depth clipping off. Now the far end is actually going to be the end of your gradient. So it starts at 18 feet, which is 20% of our, of our total far clip offset. And then the end of the gradient is going to be at the 72 foot mark, which is actually 80% of our far clip offset. And from there on, it's basically whatever you want it to be based on that sliding percentage. So if you've got it, based, if you got it to a 0% fade, then it's almost going to be non-visible. And if I slide through these, you'll see here I have 20% in the near and the 100% far. So that means that the end of my gradient is actually going to be at the end of my building. So that's a nice easy way to control how you want that to be. And of course, the from 20%, which is 18 feet, it's going to be exactly how I expect it to be. So now if I slide the start, so you can see in this image, I'm sliding the start to 50%, which is actually going to be half of my far clip offset. So half of the building will show normally with zero depth clipping, depth queuing involved. And then from there on, it's actually going to be the gradient. So here I have 90%. So the gradient is actually from 45 feet up to 81 feet, which is our 90%. And again, you can see the elevation. I've rotated it so you get a sense of it. So the reason I wanted to go through that is I think it helps you understand how depth queuing works instead of just going out there and randomly selecting and sliding until you get something you like. Obviously, you can go do that, but I like to understand what I'm doing. 
So going back into the sample project, what you see here is an elevation that doesn't have anything turned on. Now if I go to uh, my east start view, this has some of the shadow and ambient settings from our previous chapters, uh, which have the 70-50-20 rule applied and a couple other things. So we don't need to go through that again. We showed you how to apply that to elevations. But now what we're going to do is we're going to apply depth queuing to this. So the first thing I want to do is go to my floor plan and make sure that this view has my far clip offset set. So if I go to my main level and I zoom in, I'm going to select the view and make sure that it's the start view. So A, E, L, East, start. So if I select this, you'll notice that there's no far clip offset. So we're actually going to go find it. So I slide up over on the properties. I go to far clip. I say no clip. I want to change that. I want to change that to clipping without line and click OK. Now you notice I have a slider that I can pick here. So if I slide this all the way to the end, we have a wing wall here. I'm actually going to go beyond it and I'm going to hit just the end of this wing wall. You'll see I've actually set it to 115 feet. Now the reality is you can drag this on any project and be good to go. The nice thing is once you set the far clip offset, if you remember my images, now we have the ability to say, okay, if I really, really want to fine tune this and I only want this face, if I only want this face to be fully dark and then I want it to start fading from there, I can actually do the math and go from there. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my view now. So I'm going to go back to my start view. You can go down on the bottom or you can go to the tabs. I'm going to go to graphic display options. I'm going to click depth queuing and I'm going to say show depth. So now if I say 0 to 100, that's going to be a gradient from the very start all the way down to the end of my far clip. And so that looks pretty good. But let's say if I zoom in a little here, you can see this is a little bit faded, but not too faded. Let's say I want the, the beginning to be um, a little darker as, as far as this piece is concerned. I'll go back to depth queuing and I'll slide my start to maybe 20 and click OK and apply. And you'll notice that this came back into, into big picture a little bit. But meanwhile, the background is actually nice and faded away. So that's a really, really quick way to add some depth. If you want to get really, really intense with it, obviously what we can do is we can find the start of this of this um, clip plane and we can measure from it. So what I like to do is simply just draw a reference plane somewhere near it. If you wanted, we can actually do it you know, super, super in depth. But for the most part, you can see here, it's pretty much dead on, close enough for what we're doing. And we know that this guy is at 115 feet. So if we do some quick math and we say 115 feet, I'm actually gonna just type MV on my keyboard for move. I'm gonna start moving. And here's a little tip here. If you type equals 115 feet times 0.2, we've actually moved it 20 feet, just like that. And so now we can see, or 20, sorry, 20% uh, of 115. Now you can see where 20% exists. So that's not too bad, but maybe we wanted this to fade out and we just wanted the beginning. We could have, we could have changed that. But now we know exactly where our gradient is starting. So I'm going to jump back into my east elevation. And you can see we've got a nice little nice little elevation here. Now, just like the previous tutorial, if I want to add a little bit more pop to this, you know, these, these line weights are pretty good, um, but they're not perfect. Maybe we want to add a little punchiness to this front. So I'm going to type LW on my keyboard, and I'm going to change from medium lines to actually heavy lines just for the sake of, or wide lines, just for the sake of, of you being able to see it better. Maybe it's going to be too wide, but let's see how it looks. So, now I'm just selecting edges, and I'm being very careful as to what edges I'm going to select. And the reason I'm doing this instead of just drafting is that now when we move these elements, if for some reason they move, because let's be honest, they always move, um, these actually lines are going to stay with it, so your thicknesses are going to stay. So now if you notice I'm highlighting around, I want to get this bottom piece of the beam. And what's cool about line work, which is the LW tool, is I can actually drag, so I'm just going over to the right-hand side, I'm dragging these blue dots so that they're just making the outline. So I'm going to do the same here. I'm going to click this whole piece. I'm going to zoom out. I'm going to look over to the right and I'm going to drag this back. So you notice what I'm doing is I'm actually creating an outline by selecting the edges of objects. And again, the great part about this is once I'm done doing this, if we move these roofs or, or these beams or any piece of this, it's all going to move with it, including the thick lines. So now I'm going to select here. And here's another example of how we want to drag. So we select the line. We drag the blue dot back. If we click down here, we select this line, drag the blue dot back. 
We can do the same on the end here. We click the end. We have to go back to this side and drag the blue dot back. It seems like a little bit of a pain in the butt in the beginning, but you remember that once you do it this way, if these elements rotate, guess what? Or move, guess what? They're gonna move with it. So I'm just gonna finish cleaning up this little outline here. We've got a big, big line back here. It's gonna come in. And click this final line here, pull it down. And now there we go. Now we've got ourselves an elevation. It's got a nice solid outline and a really good fade to add some depth to it.